Check. Check. Railroading is the clear winner in bulk transportation, and that's because railroading, by design, is linear. Linear meaning our economic advantages and efficiencies come from freight cars being in a line as straight as possible for as long as possible. Linear also meaning our rail car movements are either forward or backward and almost never sideways. But the linear concept that was our huge advantage in bulk line haul becomes our disadvantage in the last mile. Let's watch as a two-person crew with two locomotives plans and implements a successful last mile strategy. The goal is to take the three empty cement cars to interchange and set the three loaded cement cars in position at the cement plant. Then reassemble the train and proceed east to deliver five lumber cars in place of two empties. Then the crew will hustle to the interchange point with all the empties in tow. Remember, you can't have two four axle locomotives coupled together on the curve into the lumber yard. How would you make the moves? Get out paper and pencil and get your plan ready. Wow, what a beautiful morning. Let's do some train watching. Now this is a dilemma. We've got lumber cars separated by cement cars, but we're going to take the lumber cars to where they belong. Hear that hose leaking? So as today's adventure starts out, we've got two locomotives in front. We've got three empty cement cars, two loaded lumber cars, three loaded cement cars, three loaded lumber cars. Here's the cement plant. The goal is going to be to drop off the loaded cement cars, reassemble the train in an order and a fashion that gets us to the lumber yard to drop off the lumber cars after picking up the empty lumber cars. Now, on this radius right here, you cannot have two locomotives coupled together. You can take two locomotives down in there, but they can't be coupled together. Here's your key as to what the cars are. Let's get this video started and see how this gets done. So these are the loaded cement cars coming in. Then we'll only have lumber cars. That'll make the morning go better. hear the slack coming now what they're doing they've got brakes slightly set up on that car
a good example of where a handbrake is now on a rail car. Down closer to the ground than they used to be. But still, you'd have to climb or use a brake stick. So, as our high-tech visual aid shows, we just left three cars, loaded lumber cars, sitting out parallel to the main, used the empty cement cars and two loaded lumber cars to push the three loaded cement cars into the cement plant. This part of the move is done. We're going to pull out now. And rearrange the train to go east to the lumber yard. They've got to get just beyond that switch. See the crossing lights? It interfered with the road just enough to set off the crossing gates. Here they come back. So what did we accomplish? Now we have the cement cars out of the middle of the wood cars. These cars are called bulkhead flats. Flat car with a big bulkhead on the end. That just keeps the lumber contained. Coming in. Needed a little bit more. Well, I don't have the COVID. I can actually smell the lumber. <laughs> okay, what's happening now? Nice whistle on that old GE. I can see the crossing gates are down, so something's about to happen. This turns out to be a real game of chess. It's, it's what makes industrial switching or short line railroading really fascinating. Well, what do we see there? So they left the 4096 on the main, pulled everything out. I guess it doesn't get to go on this trip. So although I couldn't see it from where I was, after they dropped the loaded cars of cement in the cement plant, they pulled out, uncoupled 
the 4096, left it on the main here, then came back in, used the 4093 to pull all these cars out, and then back down in with the 4093, three empty cement, and now the five loaded lumber cars are together. And the 4096 sitting by itself. Maybe it doesn't get to go. awfully quiet. It's not doing the work. It's just riding along now. But we still have cement cars. That's interesting, that's an old Sioux car, labeled Sioux. CEFX is Anderson's out of Toledo. Well, now we're assembled with a locomotive on each end, three empty cement cars, five loaded lumber cars ready to go east. Well, this is where the conductor gets to do a lot of walking. He's now going to walk the whole length and going to cut loose the cement cars. Then will only be lumber with a locomotive on each end. Puffing it along. These guys are usually young and fit. I'd ask him how many miles he walks in a day. I'm sure it's quite a few. And this is a nice day. Can you imagine doing that in snow drifts? That's where the old uh, rooftop walkway, catwalk, used to come in. It was quicker than walking along in the snow drifts. That was interesting. He just looked down to see if that air brake cylinder was extended, meaning that uh, he did have the brake set on these cars. Interesting message on the inside of that bulkhead flat. It's warning that if you unload that car one side at a time, it may fall over. You cannot unload all the lumber off one side. It'll roll. Well, now we're assembled with a locomotive on each end, three empty cement cars, five loaded lumber cars, ready to go east. down that way you'll see the train we're chasing <laughs> we're running neck and neck with them
goal is going to be to come in here and get those empty cars. They got here a week ago or so. The lumber's all unloaded. Send them back. Send them back to the lumber mill. Bring in the full loads. Hence the mystery of why we've got two engines. Get her done and get back. So here comes the 4093. These cement cars are empty. The conductor told me they're empty. So we got to get the empty lumber cars out before we can put the full lumber cars in. beautiful day to be out here so we have five loaded lumber three empty cement a locomotive and two empty lumber Well, so now the crew is down in the lumber yard with the whole train, a locomotive at each end, three empty cement cars, five loaded lumber cars, but at the wrong end. The red cars represent the empty lumber, which have to come out. Let's see how this gets done. So we've pulled off the lumber with the 4096. Pulled off the empty cement cars. Now we'll shove them up in here. Pull out the 4093. Take the full loaded lumbers in.
Now, the three empty cement are shoved on the main toward Newark. The five empty, correction, the five loaded lumber are pulled back toward Columbus. So the next move is quite interesting. Although the 4092 is sitting there running and has a couple cars that it needs to move, the engineer is back in the 4096 and is going to use the five loaded lumber cars to come in and grab the 4092 and the two empty lumber cars and then pull them back to the west and then shove to the east. So here's what that would look like. The two locomotives, all the cars are coupled together again. The 4092 is in the middle, but that leaves the 4096 free to pull out all the full lumber and head back down in. And that means we're almost done. coupler alignment. On a radius, the couplers aren't going to match very well. That would not have hit, and they know that. Problem solved. So are you keeping track? What have we got now? Now we've got the 4096 providing the power, five loaded lumber cars, 4093 along for the ride, and two empty lumber cars. The empty cement cars are over here. What do you think the next move is? The car was built in Nova Scotia in 05. So what's the next move? Well, if you're a thinker, you got it. The empty lumber cars in the 4093 will join the empty cement cars, leaving the 4096 with the five loads. One last trip into the lumber yard. 
Love the sound of that GE. Ten or twelve car lengths away, it just sounds so good. Idling, notching up. Stretch them out there, 4097. Yep, we got it. Well, the locomotive's in the middle, but it's not distributed power as much as that game of chess. Brake set up, all the empties in a row. One last switch down into the lumber yard. The five loaded lumber cars are on the way into the lumber yard now with the 4096. of the car comes way past the radius. Five loaded lumber cars delivered.
Well, in our adventure, that's the first time a locomotive hasn't had cars on it. And it looks like the fork trucks are coming out. Well, I just heard him clear the switch out on the main. This time, both locomotives will be on the same end. All the empties on the other end, headed back toward Columbus. Conductor told me they're going to have to duck into their home siding. Got a road train coming. Seems like a nice way to earn a living. But it's a beautiful day and things went well. January 12th, this won't be as much fun. Well, now we have two locomotives on the same end, headed toward Columbus, with the five empties in tow, and this job's complete. Last mile is labor-intensive, equipment-intensive. It's where the really the work of railroading is done after the line haul is finished. There's one of the all-time greats right there. Two locomotives. Two empty lumber cars, three empty cement cars. Back home, back to their home siding. Probably take a lunch break, got a road train coming. This shows the local back onto its own siding for the road units to pass by. Well, here comes the road train. The local had to tuck into their siding for the road train to come by. Usually four units eastbound. I'll bet you I can get some wind noise. Sorry about that, but that proves I'm out here living the dream. I see one trash car, a string of uh, tank cars.
you'd be amazed how much trash travels by train. In this case, this is coming from New York slash New Jersey. Sometimes it's building construction debris, but these cars are full and they're going down to an old coal mine in New Lexington, Ohio, where they're uh, filling up the old coal mine. Take the coal out, put the trash in, cover it each layer with dirt, do the drainage, vent off the methane, and uh, problem solved. Box car, that's probably got paper products, rolled paper, more trash. Got a net on the top of it. Tank cars. I don't have the count on this. I don't know how many cars it was. Used to push coal trains up through here with the locomotive on the back pushing. Hey, a bad axle. I should say bad wheel. You hear it? There's another one. Now these are gravel cars. So the conductors guarding the crossing the eastbound through freight is gone. It's time to get the local back out on the main. So they're going to back out, realign the switches, head into Columbus. I like seeing the old Conrail blue. Both those engines were Conrail and they came from the Monongahela. They were built for the Monongahela. Then the Conrail. Then I'm not sure where they got bounced around but uh, I'm glad they ended up here and I'm glad it's still in Conrail blue. Kind of comforting, you know what I mean? These guys are probably ready to get on with their day. It's about one o'clock and they've only done two customers. So they'll be anxious to get caught up. The day is done, the sun is setting low, another day of fine railroading. What a sunset. You hate to see a good day end, but the sun will come up tomorrow and we'll do it again. You can bet your bottom dollar on tomorrow.